Hello and welcome to episode 35 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing that takes place here in my home studio which is by the lake just outside of Toronto in Canada. It is a gorgeous sunny day, it's really bright. Um, and we are on March break here, so I have the boys home with me. They are both teenagers, and um, although we're not doing a ton of stuff, they are keeping me busy and keeping me cooking because they eat a lot. But we're having a great time and enjoying it. And because they're home, I have decided to bump my previously scheduled shop update, which was supposed to be this week. Um, I'm bumping it to next week, so my next shop update for project bags and leather goods will be on Thursday, March 21st, 12 p.m. So if you are interested in a shop update, that is when the next one will be. I've had a lot of questions about it. It's been a little while, and I apologize for that, but it's been really busy. And um, if you are looking for my shop, it is bythelakeside.com. If you're looking for me elsewhere, I am Sandy by the Lakeside on Instagram and on Ravelry. I am Sandy Ran and I also have a Ravelry group for this podcast. So if you have any questions that I happen to miss in the comments below, then please head over to the by the Lakeside group on Ravelry and I will try to answer your question there. I think that covers everywhere you can find me. Um, I've been Really excited to get back into sewing, finally. It's taken me a while. I've been trying to streamline some processes again and um, just kind of build up some inventory again after Vogue because that did take a lot of my time in conjunction with the holidays. And so my next update will be primarily leather um, and I'll share what that will be um, at the end of this episode. I'm not too sure if I'll have too many project bags, but my goal is to Maybe put a few of the regular project bags in that update as well and follow up in the next week or two after that with some project bags. I am also preparing for the Toronto Knitters Frolic, which is at the end of April. I think it's April 27th at the Japanese Cultural Center and I'm super excited to be a vendor and really looking forward to it. So I've been doing some planning and um, thinking about how I'm gonna set up my booth and products that I will have, and I'm really, really excited, but that has been what has been keeping me busy. So I feel like it's been a little while since I filmed just a regular podcast. I filmed a vlog last and a Vogue Knitting Live update. So I'm kind of excited to get back to some knitting talk, and I'm just gonna jump right in. I do actually have a finished object that I love. It feels like I finished this quite a while ago, but I don't think that I've shared it with you. I'm pretty sure I haven't. So this is another hat that I made and I feel like I made quite a few hats this past winter. And after I've knit each one, I think it's my new favorite. This one is no exception. I love it. It is the Chelsea Mixer hat and the yarn that I used is the Chelsea Lux Bulky Weight. The color is Sunday Times which I love, it's just perfect. I'm not sure if you can see, I'll show it to you a little closer, but um, it just really reminds me of newsprint because not only do you have the shades of gray and black and white, but there's this little bit of yellow, just a hint of it, which kind of reminds me of an aging newspaper. And this beautiful black pom-pom, I just love it. It is so soft and I love knitting with Christina's yarns. They're really enjoyable to knit with. It's just super soft. It would knit up really, really quickly, which is always fun when you're using bulky. And I just love it. So that is um, probably my last finished object for a little while. I think I was on a roll. And now I am getting back into some of my bigger projects. Some old, some new, and I will share those with you now. So I'm gonna jump into whips. So before I start, actually, I know I've spoken about this. I was totally inspired by Trisha from Tie-Dye Diva podcast and Tie-Dye Diva on Instagram. I love Trisha. She is such a pleasure to watch and so inspiring. 
And as I was going back and watching some of her older videos or podcasts, I realized she's knit a whole bunch of stuff that I've had in my queue and have had yarn sitting in the cupboard for, for a really, really long time. So we have such similar tastes. And I was inspired by her to kind of manage my whips without feeling overwhelmed into three groups. So one sweater project on the needles, actively on the needles, I might have a few tucked away, but really one that I'm focusing on. One shawl, or in some cases that might be a cowl, and one small project, which is a hat or a pair of socks. And so I was really, really good with that for a few months. Um, and then things kind of changed. So I'm just gonna jump right in. My first work in progress keeps in line with that. It is a sweater and it is in this beautiful Boku bag. I was considering casting on a brand new sweater, but this was in my um, pile of whips that I put down almost a year ago and I've decided to pull it out again. It is the Little Cabin Sweater by Caitlin Hunter, which is Boyland Knitworks. Let's see if I can, if you can see that, I hope. It's a beautiful, simple shaped pullover with bobbles and um, a beautiful little cabin design at the hem. So it is a bottom up knit. And the story behind this is I cast it on quite a while ago. I don't remember when. I love the yarn. I picked up this yarn, not this past Rhinebeck, but the one before, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that color. This is Miss Babs Yowza, which is a dream to knit with too. Look at the size of that. It's crazy. And the color is moss, and it's so beautiful. I think it's this yarn that really made me pull this project out again. And when I pulled it out, I picked up, I think I was on track with the pattern, um, but after knitting a few rounds, I realized that I think farther back, like when I had knit on this last year, I must have made a mistake and the pattern was off. So I ripped it out, which was fine actually. It was a little bit uh, disappointing, but worth it in the end. So let's see if I've got the right side here. Here we go. So I've just got the bottom restarted again and I really like it. You can see these little cabins are starting to take shape. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's really, um, it's really pretty. Actually, I had it the wrong way. There it is. You can see them there, little cabins. It's a really fun knit, but it does take my concentration. And because I messed up on the pattern last time, I've been really cautious. I do not want to do that again. And um, I was going strong on it when I cast it on again. I plowed through the first little section, but I kind of wanted a break. So instead of picking up one of the many, many projects that I already have, I got distracted. I'm sorry, Trisha. It's not very good. So I, one Saturday night, just didn't feel like knitting on that or on the other whip that I'm going to show you that I have sitting on my needles, but I was really, really dying to cast on with this gorgeous, nice knit yarn that I got at Vogue Knitting Live. This has got to be one of my most favorite colors ever. And I'm, I know I probably say that, I've probably said that with a few different things, but this is really, so beautiful. I think it would be an amazing sweater too. It is nice and knit in the worsted weight in the color autumn. Let's see there. And when I got this at Vogue, I knew that I wanted to make Kate's poncho. So this is a pattern from the ladies at Nice and Knit. And so I cast it on. And it's so much fun. It is knitting up so beautifully. This color's amazing. It's just stunning. So I decided to do the modification that I had seen on the Nice and Knit um, Instagram account that 
Katie was doing. So originally it is um, a cowl, a bit of a cowl, or turtleneck, I should say. Sorry, it's a turtleneck. And it is in a seed stitch, which follows down in the center as well. But Katie was knitting one, and I really loved the look of it with a crew. And I don't always like a lot of bulk in the neck area, and I thought with spring coming, it would be really fun to knit the crew version. So that is what I've done, and I love it. It is so much fun, and um, although I love the look of seed stitch, I don't always like knitting it, but in this project, it's so much fun because it's really just that center and back panel. It's really easy. So I'm really excited about this project, and this has kind of taken over as one of my three current whips, even though it's not a small project. I can't help it and I did make I noticed I did make a mistake or two in my um, Increases right at the beginning, but I think I'm just gonna be able to there's a little bit of a hole here I'm just gonna um, Knit it closed with some spare yarn, but it's beautiful. I love it. I am using the needles the needle size that it calls for which is um, a US size 9 and yeah, I'm loving it. I think this is going to be, I don't know if I mentioned, but we are going away for just one night this week for a little family gathering in Niagara Falls. And I think this is gonna be the project that I bring because it's really easy. I have the pattern memorized now and I'm loving it. It is in one of my favorite bags, which is the Monstera print. And I do have more fabric for this. So I will be making more for my shop and also for the Toronto Knitters Frolic. Love this fabric. So yeah, this beautiful yarn. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I'm done this project because I really love knitting with that yarn. Now, my third project you've seen before too. It is also in one of my bags. This is also a really fun print. And it is the three color cashmere cowl by Hohi Locatelli. And I was doing pretty well on this too, but then I stopped again. So I think I just get a little bit bored with any project that I'm working on, no matter how much I love it, and that's my problem. So here is my cowl. It's moving quickly. I might bring this one on my trip too, I don't know. This is good for the car. So here is my three color cashmere cowl. I am using Plucky Knitter Yarns, which I have shown before. These are my three colors. And I'm pretty sure that I've put them on a Ravelry page already, but just in case. This one is, what is this? Wintry Mix. Pure Michigan. And what is this one? I can't remember what this one is. This beautiful dark gray. But this is also really fun to knit with. It, um, it's a cashmere, there's a cashmere content in here, so it's really luxurious, really nice to work with. And I cannot wait for this project too. I think this is gonna be one that I will wear a lot. In fact, I think all of these projects, I'm really excited to wear. So I am trying to focus on only these three. I know that the poncho is kind of a big one, but I'm not knitting on socks right now, and I've decided to um, not cast on any more hats, even though I have one planned and it's in my dream knitting. I will share that. But basically, those are my three. And as soon as I finish one of these projects, my spring plans are to pick up one of my two most loved shawls that I was working on last summer and try to finish those because I love them so much. I put them aside for the winter. One is the Bayou shawl in a linen and it's beautiful. Um, I really want that one I think first. And then I have a girl's best friend shawl which is just crying to be finished. So I have a lot ahead of me but I'm really gonna try to stick to those three. I do have dream knitting other than my other shawls to get to, um, but it's another hat and so I'm really gonna wait. But I thought I would share it with you anyways because it's so pretty. 
And I know I shared this yarn in my Vogue Knitting Live recap video, the haul video, um, but I wanted to share it again because now I have a beautiful pom-pom. And my dream knitting is the Kobuk hat. And to use this beautiful Legacy Fiber Arts yarn, this is DK in the color Tuxedo, which is one of my favorite shades of like a, I don't know, like a beautiful royal purple with this gorgeous mohair and raspberry sorbet. Such a beautiful combination. I saw Sue from Legacy Fiber Arts knitting one of these and I knew right away that I had to have it. So that is um, set to be the Kobuk hat, which is also by Caitlin Hunter. And then I found this stunning pom-pom at the knitting loft when I was there a few weeks ago. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So I really cannot wait, but I'm gonna have to because there's just too much going on. But this pom-pom is beautiful. Um, I actually don't know who makes this. I'm gonna hold up the name. And I got that at the Knitting Loft, which is a beautiful yarn shop in Toronto. And I've gone there a few times now, and every time I go, there's more beautiful stuff. It's just, oh, and by the way, if you're a local, it's one of the few places I've ever seen nice and knit yarn, so you can check it out there. It's just so much, there's so much good stuff in that store. It's very tempting, and I love the people there. So, okay, I think that's it for my dream knitting too, because I really wanna to stick to those three and not get carried away. Next, I am going to show you a couple of things that I purchased in the last little while. I've been trying not to buy yarn, so I have bags. <laughs> and one of the bags that I got um, quite a while ago, actually, was meant to be a purchase at Vogue Knitting Live, but it didn't make it there in time, so it came just a little bit after. And it is this beautiful tote bag from Clinton Hill Cashmere. I've been wanting this for quite a while because I thought it would just be the perfect, huge, big, huge tote bag to bring on knit nights or um, when I'm going to sit and knit at the knitting loft. I just thought it'd be perfect. You can fit multiple projects, your wallet, whatever you want, and it's got beautiful leather handles. So I was really excited to get this, um, and I love the color. It's the olive. And something else that I have been wanting to purchase for, I don't even know how long, like from before fall, I've really, really wanted the Plystra backpack. I love bags from them, but they're coming from, is it Norway or Sweden? I can't remember, but they're coming from somewhere in Europe. And um, I knew that there would be duties and the exchange would be a lot. And then I found out that a lot of people were purchasing them from the Black Black Mountain Yarn Shop. It took me a second there. They are in North Carolina. It's a beautiful yarn shop and I managed to pick one up in one of their updates. So here is this beautiful backpack in the, I think it's called Dusty Pink. It's the pale pink. It's just another really nice, I love big bags and um, this one can fit quite a bit. You could even put your laptop in here if you wanted and um, you can fit multiple project bags in here. So I really wanted it for the spring. I am a little bit worried about getting it dirty so I scotch guarded it. it seems to be fine and um, it's just so cute. I'm just waiting because it's still really yucky out here. It's um, the snow is not melted yet. Um, I think our temperatures are getting a bit better this week, but it's gonna be really dirty here for a little while until all the salt is washed away and um, all the mud disappears. So I haven't used it yet, I'm dying to use it. And it also comes with this really big, simple project bag that has some pockets inside too, so I love it. I think it was a, a great purchase. It did, I'm not gonna lie, it did cost a small fortune to ship it here, and um, it was a lot. 
but I've wanted it for so, so long that I was saving up for it and it was totally worth it. When I got it, I had no regrets. It's really, really beautiful. So if you have been wondering about them, they're all that they seem to be in pictures. It's beautiful, it's so well made. The fabric quality is really nice and I'm really looking forward to using that one. Next, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my next shop update, which will be, I think I mentioned, next week on Thursday, March 21st at 12 p.m. It is primarily going to be a leather update and rose gold items that I've been showing on Instagram. So I am planning on bringing back more of the brown and black pouches, like the clutch, which I find so handy. I have my black one in my purse somewhere, and this one is also the one that I use. It has all my little essentials in here, gum, hand cream, notebook, a few things like that. I love this pouch, so those are coming back. I will have more of these coming back as well, which are the little um, accessory pouches with handles. So I will have the small and large in brown and black again. And those are also really handy. I've got this one set up with just my everyday planner, um, my favorite pens for my planner and a little ruler, some washi tape, stuff like that. They are also really nice for knitting needles. I've been storing a whole bunch of my DPNs that I've been collecting in one of these, and um, also as a notions pouch, it's great. But some new things that I will be offering, I've shown these before, they are the little leather scissors sheaths, and um, because I loved them so much with my, my own rose gold scissors, I decided I wanted to Put these in my shop as well so I will be adding these beautiful rose gold stork scissors they are embroidery um, or finishing scissors and I keep them in my notions pouch with this little cover on them so they'll be sold separately if you don't want the scissors you don't have to buy them um, if you have your own you can pop this little leather cover on any little scissors that you have and I think it's so handy because then you're not worried about it poking through the lining of your pouches or project bags. And because I was getting the scissors anyways, I thought why not get this cute little rose gold measuring tape to go with it. So it's got inches and centimeters and the little button. And I just thought it was the perfect little pair of accessories to go with my leather. So those will be in the shop next week as well. And I will have to keep you posted on the regular project bags. I have tons cut, cut and ready to start installing zippers soon, but because I'm preparing for the frolic, I am just trying to manage um, my time for that as well. And I'm really working towards having more product in my shop on a regular basis as opposed to the mad rush of a shop update each month. I'm sure there will be some prints that sometimes that might still happen with, but my ultimate goal right now is to build a little bit more of an inventory so that I can have um, less, less people coming to the shop and finding nothing. So that is what I'm working towards and it might take me um, a little time just to get there to build up that inventory. And I'm hoping that uh, my preparation for the Knitter's Frolic in April will help me do that. So I'm just gonna sew my brains out, do as much as I possibly can, and then hopefully have a really good inventory to set up in my shop as well. That is my shop update. And the last thing I wanted to mention, oops, were just a couple, the last thing I wanted to mention were just a couple of my favorite things because I always like to pop some of these things in at the end of an episode if I have any, and I do. I showed this on Instagram and I wanted to share because if you are in a climate that is similar to what we have here, it has been so dry. Um, one of my sons has such dry hands that we call, we call them crocodile hands because he refuses to wear gloves. He does not feel the cold. 
so he just doesn't bother but his hands have been so dry and so have mine it's been a really really dry climate with all the heat that we've had to pump through the house and then with knitting and also all the fabric cutting and sewing that I do it takes a lot of the moisture out of your hands so I saw this in a recent issue of Martha Stewart living and I've never seen this on the shelf in Canada but I did find it on Amazon it is the Aveeno cracked skin relief Sika balm or Sika balm and it's like it's a huge tub and it wasn't that expensive for this size but it's like this thick kind of I don't know I don't know how to explain it I guess it's a balm it's um, it's not greasy though and it moisturizes your hands really, really well, and even your cuticles, um, your elbows, things like that. So I know I talk about moisturizers all the time, but this is another really good one that um, I think will probably last me for years because it's huge. But I wanted to share that because I've been really enjoying this. I did share on one of my earlier videos, or maybe a couple of them, including my last vlog, the Hobonichi Weeks that I have been using and I've been really enjoying it and I finally got the leather cover that I had ordered a few weeks ago and it's so pretty. I'm obsessed with the um, Sojourner covers and I was having trouble picking what color I wanted for this and I finally just chose the navy and I love it. It does have a different name so I will put it on the screen. Um, I can't remember what it is right now but it's a beautiful, rich navy. And it's just the folio cover for Hobonichi Weeks. And you can order these covers for so many different sizes of your planners or notebooks. And I've got my new little, not just knots from Babette, the little monkey fist bookmark. So pretty. And also my little paper clip. I love these little things. I don't know. I just love a leather cover on my notebook. So I thought I would share that. And then when I purchased this, I've also been really wanting one of the pen pouches. And so I ordered it in this beautiful green color. And again, it has a name that I cannot remember and I will put it on the screen if I can remember it. And it's just to put in, I'm missing a couple, but just those couple of pens that you want to keep handy and not have floating in at the bottom of your purse or your bag. So I purchased that. And these kind of stay on my dining room table when I want to take notes. This is my home and self-care or wellness kind of journal. So I really like having these together. They're so beautifully made and they feel so soft. So those were um, a fun purchase that I received in the mail in the last few weeks and I wanted to share. So my last favorite thing is yet another cookbook, and I did not expect to be buying another one, but I found this Skinny Taste One and Done book, and I think I actually found out about Gina Homolka, who is the author of this book, through Jacqueline of Brooklyn Knit Folk. She does um, some meal prep stuff on Instagram some weeks, and I really love those on her stories. And a lot of the recipes that she was making um, this one particular day were hashtagged skinny taste. So I checked that out. I was really interested because they didn't look like recipes that would be low calorie or considered diet in any way. And so when I was out at a bookstore, I went to look her up. I found a few of her books and this is the one, I think it's a new one. It really stood out to me. It is um, filled with recipes for your Instant Pot slow cooker, air fryer, I don't have an air fryer, but that's okay, a sheet pan, skillet, or Dutch oven. Um, so they're really kind of like one pot meals, which I love. It means there's less cleaning up usually. And when I picked it up, I just thought it was filled with recipes that my whole family would love. And I don't think I was wrong because the first recipe I made was this leek, turkey, leek, and potato gratin, which is kind of like a shepherd's pie. And everyone loved it. I posted about it on Instagram and I have marked so many other recipes in here that I know my family will love. 
And I love the fact that there is a whole section on the Instant Pot, which is also a great tool when you have a family. And as much as I love cooking, there are days when I just don't feel like it. And so to have like a one pot recipe for me is so helpful. And this book, because it's not all Instant Pot, I find it a little more inspiring because it could be in a big Dutch oven, it could be on a sheet pan, it could be in the slow cooker, whatever. I really like that the chapters are all a little bit different and I have a feeling that this is going to be um, like a go-to book for me I'm really enjoying it so far and I like to post when I when I remember I do like to post on my stories when I'm cooking something fun or a new recipe so um, if you're interested in what I'm cooking because I love sharing um, it will be on my Instagram and I also save all of the um, the cooking stories that I do on a like a saved folder there. So I think that's everything for today. I am going to try and clean up this mess, do a little bit of um, grocery shopping and get my house in order before we head out to Niagara Falls tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. It's just one night, but we are going to head over to Buffalo and do a quick shop at Target, Trader Joe's, and, um, and then spend some time at Niagara Falls. So I hope you guys are all doing well and thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.